local recording. All right, yeah, sure. Here we go. Uh, welcome to Fort Knox Update. I'm here with Sassine Ghazi, the incoming CEO of Synopsis. Uh, as of January 2024, I believe. So uh, great to, to get to know you a little bit early. Um, uh, you're in town. We're not actually sitting together, but you're in town on the East Coast uh, having some meetings. I'd really like to get a sense of how Synopsys' work is one of the key software tools for, for designing chips, how that continues to unfold in the AI era and, uh, and, and how and whether you kind of gain share uh, and your IP gets more valuable during this time. So what are you telling folks this week about how Synopsys plays at this time? Yeah, that's a great question, John. If you look at the, the world as it's moving to smart everything, it's smartphone, smart car, smart home, et cetera, et cetera. What that, what that requires is a semiconductor chips that is advanced and sophisticated in order to power that ambition of smart everything. You layer on top of it AI, which is creating a huge demand in terms of uh, hardware in order to support the ambition of the multiple applications of AI. What that means for Synopsys is more chips. It means more of more of the software the customer use in order to develop their chip and more of our IP, where our IP is used to connect these chips together. Uh, and that's why you're seeing a fantastic performance in terms of our growth over the last three plus years. We've been growing at about 17% revenue CAGR. And uh, it's driven really by that high demand due to the smart everything world that we're living in. It seems to me also that there are more uh, chip designers in the world than there used to be because we've got this trend of uh, vertical integration and customization. You know, Amazon's making its own chips, Google's making its own chips, Microsoft, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. Intel's trying to stand up a foundry business because it's no longer a world of, hey, you can have any color of x86 you want as long as it's black, right? I, I imagine all of those potential customers need your software in order to design what they want someone else to build. Exactly. Traditionally, what we sold and who we sold to are the semiconductor companies. And uh, we've been in business for 37 years. The customers like the Qualcomm, the MediaTek, AMD, NVIDIA, et cetera, Intel, uh, were our uh, primary customers. Then that expanded to the hyperscalers, the Google, the Amazon, the Microsoft, et cetera. And the reason they went into the chip business because they wanted to optimize the hardware for a specific workload. Uh, and that necessitated their investment in chip design, which is again, fantastic for Synopsys. It means they need to use our uh, design automation software to develop the chip, as well as our IP in order to accelerate their development. Now you look into new markets like automotive, for example, it's a whole new segment due to the sophistication of the, the hardware or the chips into a car, they are becoming a customer of Synopsys. AI is another layer of uh, application where there's a different type of chip that you need in order to accelerate uh, for AI applications for these various markets. So all of those are uh, customers for Synopsys. You mentioned Intel and uh, opening up their uh, foundry uh, or going into the foundry business. I'm not sure if you've seen about two weeks ago, we announced a very strategic relationship with Intel that building a fab is not enough. The key is how do you design in a chip into the fab? And that's where Synopsys comes in as we enable the semiconductor folks to design in a chip for a specific fab. And that's what we've done with Intel in that particular case. So here's the tricky part for me, and I think for a lot of investors, once we start really trying to understand the semiconductor ecosystem, you look at ARM, and I know you guys are an investor uh, in, in the ARM IPO. ARM has, has become a part of just about everything, which is what they were telling me was going to happen when I was out visiting them, what, I think it was 15 plus years ago in Cambridge. But at the same time, if you look at their revenue growth, it's not that impressive in part because as you become a part of everything 
you've got to sort of move up the stack and provide deeper, more valuable tools. Your IP has to become more valuable even as you become more entrenched. Um, are, are you on a different trajectory than somebody like who, who becomes a common ingredient, but not necessarily a more essential higher margin ingredient, even as the market expands? Yes. So let me expand a little bit on the IP business in the context of uh, what's happening the, this week and the next uh, two weeks as ARM prepares for IPO. So as you look at the ARM business, they've been or initially focused on the mobile market where they became the de facto processing unit for the smartphone. They expanded or are expanding into the data center and client type of business with an ambition, of course, to go after other market verticals. Uh, they are roughly about 2.6 billion in revenue. And you look at the Synopsys IP business, which, by the way, earlier this year, we made a strategic decision to report it as a separate segment. And the reason we wanted to report it as a separate segment is to share with our investor community the business that we have in IP. We have about one and a half billion dollar IP business uh, growing at in the mid teens. And in the last three year, Kager is roughly in the 15 to 17 percent business uh, growth business and operating in the 30 percent or so ops margin. Now. If you look at the criticality of that IP business, any chip that either has an ARM processor or an x86, it doesn't matter what, you need to connect these IPs together. And this is where Synopsys interface IP comes into play. Now, in terms of the monetization that you're talking about, uh, we have a certain business model that has been fairly healthy for Synopsys, which again, we're seeing in the mid teens growth and we anticipate uh, that growth to continue in that range. So um, let's talk about what's happening in automotive. You mentioned it earlier, but in, in conversation with uh, Marvell, Matt Murphy over there, he's described in, in some ways automotive and data center to be similar because uh, the, the modern car is sort of like a data center on wheels. And there are, again, lots of different systems to, to interconnect. How do you compare the software and design prowess necessary uh, to continue designing for the modern car to the computing systems uh, that Synopsys has been uh, designing for in the past? If you look at currently a modern car uh, has roughly between 80 to 100 million lines of code, which is significant amount of code in a car. If you project towards 2030 timeframe, it will have about 300 million lines of code. That's a lot of code in order to connect the car to its owner, the car to car, car to city, et cetera. So that connectivity and the cute required on the edge from all the sensors that are sitting in the car is a fairly sophisticated system that you're designing for. Where Synopsys comes in is, of course, the ability to uh, bring that system architecture together and validate that system. Because for a car, of course, safety is essential. Reliability is critical. With all the lines of code, you need to make sure it's secure. Now, everything I just described is very similar to a data center. If you are AWS or Azure, et cetera, you do care about the security of your data center, the reliability of it, et cetera, and the performance of that uh, system. Not to mention power efficiency in the car in order to drive longer uh, mileage, you need an efficient, uh, power efficient system. And what Synopsys does, we bring a uh, products at the software architecture level before the car is even designed, what we call an electronics digital twin, to be able to model that system, verify that system before the OEM makes the investment in the car. Once they go to build the actual electronic system, we provide the IP, we partner with the ecosystem to manufacture it, et cetera, uh, which is a very exciting opportunity for Synopsys and the Marvell of the world, as you mentioned. Now, we've talked about... Uh... Synopsys's role in the new automotive market and in designing for AI, we haven't talked about how you're using AI within your product suite. There's a lot of talk about uh, co-pilots and assistants 
for writing code, and I imagine for design as well. What is Synopsys's approach to building AI capabilities into the design software that make that process faster, more accurate, more convenient? In the Q3 earnings call, we emphasized a point that Synopsys has pioneered AI for chip design. And let me tell you just a very quick story on that. In the, around the 2017 timeframe is when we started to invest in AI for chip design. If you think about the compute intense uh, algorithms that are needed in order to design a chip, it's truly one of the most sophisticated compute intense tasks in, in, in humankind. So around 2020 timeframe, we were able to provide a design assistance AI environment for our chip designers, for our customers. Now, this is evolving, of course, the technology to go from an assistance and optimization to a generative approach uh, where you can, as a chip designer, have the AI system assisting you for exploring various tasks and provide you not only ass assistance and optimization engine, but get you to a way where you can provide and have the AI system generate many of the stages of the chip design process, which is something we're super excited about. And actually we're in an early stage of monetization of it because we started that deployment about 2020 timeframe. Let me ask more about that then. Um, on whose infrastructure is this, or is it your own? Are you doing it in partnership with a hyperscaler? And you know, what are the essential resources needed? To what degree is this reliant on accelerator chips, you know, things from NVIDIA, or are you able to work with CPUs uh, just as conveniently? Good question, John. Um, it's uh, it's our own machine learning uh, reinforcement learning uh, algorithm. Um, in terms of the hardware to support it, it can be a CPU or a GPU. Of course, you'll get more acceleration if you are running on a GPU. So what we offer our customer, e either they can run it on-prem with whatever hardware infrastructure they have, and we have a partnership with uh, the, the, the top uh, cloud providers where they can, uh, our customers can use them either on-prem or with the cloud uh, supplier of choice uh, that they work with. Uh, so in the model for this, I imagine a smaller shop, similar to um, being able to go buy the drink in, in the original cloud model, smaller shops are gonna want to um, not purchase their own equipment and have it in-house. And then larger shops that are doing more sensitive work are going to want to do that uh, on premise. How long is the runway from now to scaling that business up and starting to monetize it at a rate where in investors are gonna be able to understand how the business works? So um, we have a special relationship with uh, Azure where uh, we synopsis are able to engage those smaller customers that you mentioned that they don't want to make the investment in their IT infrastructure or in setting up the, the environment and their workflow for uh, designing a chip. So that relationship we have with Azure, it, it, uh, the customer engages only with synopsis and synopsis behind the scene engage with uh, the, the cloud provider in order to provide the customer the right workflow and setup. Uh, and we announced this in early 2023, and we have more than a couple dozen customers at this stage, still early, mostly small customers engage in that model. As you go to large customers, they're looking really for a hybrid approach. Because no matter how big you are, you don't want to invest in massive compute all on-prem. You want to have the flexibility to surge certain, certain workloads to a cloud provider during a, a certain task of the chip development, which is where I see the future going uh, in the next two to three years. Now, if you go beyond three years, will it be more cloud heavy? Uh, I do believe that will be the case uh, because of the massive workload required to, to perform these tasks. You layer on top of it AI, 
which is the beauty of AI. If you give it more compute, it will be able to optimize and provide uh, more uh, quality of uh, results uh, than less computation. I imagine almost no bigger target for hackers uh, and probably nation state hackers than uh, cloud design capabilities for chips, right? So um, big security investment here as well. Yes, I mentioned earlier uh, from a security, safety, uh, et cetera, as it comes to a car. Security, really, the way Synopsys is approaching it is from two angles. The one angle is security IP that sits at the chip level. So at the hardware level, it can detect certain activity that was not programmed for. And as it detects them, it can take certain actions. So that's IP security IP that sits at the hardware at the chip level. Then we have a business which is that we call it the software integrity, which tracks and uh, uh, scan the software for security vulnerability. You're absolutely right. As I mentioned earlier, when a car has 300 million lines of code, it's such a security vulnerable target and if you can take over a car, you know, it does not only impact the performance of the car, it has a safety issue. So security is absolutely critical as you start looking at the intersection between the software and the hardware optimization. All right, Sassine Ghazi, you give me a lot of time. I appreciate that. Uh, incoming CEO uh, at Synopsys, Chief Operating Officer for quite a while. Um, looking forward to talking to you more. Same here, John. Take care. Thank you.